Team House with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. This article that you wrote, it's, it's an amazing article. Uh, it, I read it and I instantly felt jealous and I wished, damn, I wish I had wrote that. This is this is just an amazing piece of history that you had captured in this article. Can you tell us about how that piece of history came to you and how you began writing it and, and what it's about? Yeah, sure. So this is an article um, uh, that appeared a couple of years ago in Yahoo News. Uh, where I was working at, at, at the time, um, and, and who I'm very grateful to for giving me the time to, to sort of research the article and, 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 and write it. Um, that basically uh, tells the story of the human intelligence side of the Cuban Missile Crisis that had, had never really been publicly told before, um, and in particular about the role of a CIA officer called Tom Hewitt, um, a paramilitary officer who had uh, served in the Merchant Marine uh, during World War II um, uh, and then joined the CIA. And he had been working out of the Miami station and uh, without going into too much detail, it's a very, very long story. Um, uh, he, he basically had recruited and trained uh, uh, an agent to inf and then infiltrated that agent back into Cuba and that agent uh, stood up uh, a very successful, at least in the short term, intelligence network that was able to uh, basically lay out the part of Cuba, of Pinar del Rio province in particular, I believe, um, where nuclear where the soviets were moving uh nuclear missiles or, and uh it was that uh it, it was that human intelligence that uh allowed the u2 aircraft uh that basically told the u2s where to go look uh to photograph them and uh i found out about this uh through uh, the a friend of the family of the Hewitt family, the, the Tom Hewitt being, being the, the CIA officer, uh, and it was actually some years ago, probably 2006 time frame, I, I think 2007, and uh, uh, this friend had been at the posthumous award of the Distinguished Intelligence Medal, which the, the CIA's sort of highest award, really, um, uh, to Tom Hewitt, basically to his, uh, it was awarded, you know, uh, to his to his widow Mill Millie Hewitt um, for the role that he played, and you know, which had basically, for reasons that are not clear, been overlooked by the CIA up up to that point. Um, and so this friend of the family said, you know, you should write about this. This is interesting. And he had with him um, some of the unclassified paperwork from the ceremony that just laid it all out. <laughs> wow. You know, I, and, I mean, and not, not all the details of the story, but basically said in black and white, this guy's team discovered where the missiles were, and we sent the U2s to uh, keep the role of the team a secret. And wow. uh, and so, I, I I made a number of uh, sort of stall attempts that basically stalled to to get at this story. I mean, this was back in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, uh, two thousand nine timeframe. And I I met with Millie Hewitt, the the widow of Tom Hewitt, on a number of occasions, um, and and got uh, did did some interviewing with her. But I, she was very reluctant to, um, for various reasons, uh, to do something if she thought it was going to get, uh, if it was going to cause problems with CIA. Uh, CIA weren't much help to me at, at, at the time. Um, and, you know, I had other work projects that I had to be getting along with. So I, I sort of put it on ice for a while. And 
and, and for, I mean, of course, one of the challenges, even back then, trying to report on anything from the early 60s is that most of the participants are, have long since passed away. Um, and that was the case. Unfortunately, by the time I found out about the, the award, the person who had put Hewitt in for the award, the CIA officer who'd been his boss and had basically said, hey, you know, we, we never recognized Tom Hewitt for the extraordinary role that, that he and his agents played in, uh, in a, you know, averting disaster in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, that, that, that fellow had also died, you know, just a, a year or two previously. Oh, wow. um, uh, and so when I got to, to Yahoo News, I, uh, I knew that, 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 you know, my editors there were, you know, very interested in national security things. And, and, and I managed to persuade them, um, to their credit, to uh, cut me loose for a while to dig into this. And I, I went back. Unfortunately, Millie Hewitt by that point had, had also passed away, but uh, uh, her son Tim and his family uh, were, were still alive. And they had, they had some of Tom Hewitt's papers um, I already had some, some that Millie had given me and, and Tom was able to share, uh, share more. And by that point also, there were more, uh, CIA documents that, uh, had appeared on, on, uh, one or two websites, sort of basically archive type websites on, on the, uh, on the net that I was able to, uh, cross-reference some things on that I hadn't, that, that I don't think had existed back in 2007 when I first started looking into it. Um, and so I was, I was able to basically put the, the whole story together. Uh, the, the one part of it that I, I was frankly slightly frustrated with was that I, I wasn't able to tell the enough as much of the story of the Cuban agents themselves as I would have liked to. Um, uh, there's still one or two relatives alive down in Miami, but uh, the one uh, lady I really wanted to speak with um, didn't speak any English, um, and which wouldn't have been an absolute barrier if they'd been sort of happy, but they were, they, they, they were quite... Um, unfortunately sort of suspicious of reporters looking into looking into these events from uh, what is now 60 years ago um but i was able to i was very uh, lucky with the material that i did have and i was able to write a, a sort of a narrative style um story ab about it and you know uh it was one of those stories where you you basically taking a little fact here, a little fact there, and you're putting the jigsaw together. So I was able to describe um, with a fair degree of certainty the way that they infiltrated um, uh, into the, uh, you know, into Cuba, um, and describe that in a sort of novelistic sort of fashion. I, I, so anyway, if you, uh, if anybody wants to read that, and they Google Sean D. Naylor, Yahoo News, Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, you know, that story will pop pop right up. I, I thought what was like really astounding about this story, and, and like I said, it, it, in my opinion, rewrites the history of the Cuban Missile Crisis, is we had always been told that these missiles were discovered via technical intelligence methods, right? Yes. Your story is saying actually that what happened was that there were human intelligence assets on the ground in Cuba. As I recall, they paddled kayaks up a river and had yeah. eyes on the, the uh, missile launchers and then reported that back to CIA. They were then able to confirm the information via you. So it was human being confirmed via uh, a technical intelligence platform, the U-2 spy plane at that time. And you're also saying that the U-2 was able to provide some top cover for the agents on the ground as far as concealing their role. Right, the actual source yeah, of the information. Right, yeah. Right. yeah, and I mean, that, uh, yeah, I think the kayak was actually the infiltration. Um, 
So, uh, I, I'm not sure that they were looking at the missiles from the kayaks, um, but I think you're, you're picking up exactly why I thought this story was so important. It wasn't just adding new information to what's publicly known about, about how the missiles were found. It is that I think it's, it's not much of an exaggeration to say that the Cuban Missile Crisis really marked a hinge in the history of intelligence, um, uh, after which uh, technical intelligence of, of all various sorts, um, but particularly imagery intelligence um, from satellites and, and, and sort of uh, spy planes and, and so forth like the U-2, uh, started to gain precedence. And I think in the minds of policymakers and national security intellectuals, there was this sense that, you know, the Cuban Missile Crisis marked Right. Because of a the U- because of the role of the U twos, you know, we can increasingly now rely on technical means to uh, <clears throat> to gain intelligence, and uh, it began sort of the slow, uneven decline. I I I would say of um, human intelligence, particularly in the civilian in- intelligence agencies, and that obviously has rebounded from from time to time, depending on each president's priorities and so forth. But I mean, I think it, you know, I'm not saying anything uh, unusual if I said that, you know, by the late 70s, a lot of people thought that the CIA's human intelligence uh, prowess had declined uh, significantly from where it was sort of 15 years previously. And it's kind of ironic, too, because, you know, I think it was like around the Carter administration when they really started saying, look, like tech, you know, technical capabilities are the future of intelligence. We don't need all this human intelligence. The CIA lost a lot of their very experienced people, like from the OSS and things like that. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, this was kind of one of the, the focal points or the genesis of it this the U two's grabbing it, or mm. you know, determining it when it was actually done by human intelligence. Yes, yeah, so it's a classic spy operation, right? You know, classic human intelligence spy operation. I mean, it was a case officer training up a couple of agents, recruiting and training them, and then infiltrating them behind enemy lines into enemy held territory, and them reporting back. You know, on sort of wireless and, 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 you know, that was, uh, it, it was classic old school Cold War uh, spying. And, yeah. and the, the lesson that probably should have been learned from that is it's a case study of these different types of ints working with one another mm-hmm. and supporting one another yes. rather than just yes. relying on one or the other. Exactly, yes. It, it's yeah. also a case study and I think <clears throat> in the intelligence community being horrible at PR and, uh, you know, like understanding that, <laughs> that, you know, keeping your means and your methods a secret is very important, but also is really recruiting guys and putting them on the side of the road, really that secret of, of a tactic that they're afraid even so many years later that, that they don't want to come forward and say, hey, yeah, like we won. We, we did won. Good. We achieved this. Yeah. This is how we did it. Not like yeah. this is how we recruited the sources. This is but everybody knows that every intelligence service across the world record, recruits sources, uh, recruits assets. So, you know, when at that time, what we're hearing about the CIA, we're hearing about, Q, you know, uh, the failed assassination attempt with the cigars. You know, we're, we, yes. we hear about these bad things, but it it would not hurt these organizations sometimes to to tout their victories. Yes. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, and I, I was sort of surprised that, I mean, the CIA, when I when I really wrote, reported and wrote the story um, for Yahoo News, uh, the CIA tried to help me, but they, they didn't come through with an awful lot. I mean, I came, most of the stuff in that story I, I came up with on, on my own. Um, but to, you know, on the flip side of that is they did actually tweet the story out. When, oh, wow. it, uh, when it was published on 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 the CIA Twitter 
<laughs> they handle. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I suppose I should be grateful for that. Yeah, I mean, you did him a favor, really, Sean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it, 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 by the way, it, it, it didn't... Getting tweeted by the CIA is, is great, having a story to it, but I, I once uh, was uh, retweeted by uh, then-President Donald Trump. And if you want to see traffic, that's <laughs> how to do it. That, 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 uh... Right, right. You're either an instant <laughs> hero or an instant oh villain. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. but, <laughs> what, what, what story was that that the president I, retweeted? Was, I, you know, I, I...